Hello and welcome into Views from the Sideline. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, my partner, Malik Hill. We're already in July. We are right into the start of Summer League, basically. Pistons have made some moves in free agency. The league has changed a lot, and there's some major trades going on. But first, we have to get to an NFL trade that actually just happened. Malik, break is it this down. The fir- is this the first time we've like been right on time with a breaking story? Like to start a podcast, I think this might be the first. I don't know. We've had a few during every once in a while, but you know, maybe. Yeah, so Baker Mayfield, everybody's been wondering for months where he's going. If the Browns were just going to hold him hostage for the rest of the year, just in case Deshaun Watson got suspended, they finally made a move. Mm-hmm. Baker Mayfield has been traded to the Carolina Panthers. Woo. <laughs> Now, some people predicted this. Some people thought it would either be Seattle or Carolina was in, like, the top three. Yeah. Ended up being Carolina. Uh, The Browns get back a 2024 conditional fifth-round pick, which who – I I, I don't know. This is a lot more I have to Yeah, for a former number one one overall pick, kind of sad. My first reaction was, that's all. And that will probably still be my reaction as time goes on. Mm Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so there's a competition in Carolina. Sam Darnold versus Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Uh, they just drafted Matt Corral. He gets to sit and have some time to learn behind two experienced, not great, but two experienced right. quarterbacks. Yeah. And uh, week one, Browns week- at Panthers. Uh, wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's actually really interesting. Week one matchup. Do you have any guesses as to who you think will win the job? Do you think Baker will come out on top? Because I would assume that's what a lot of people think. Yes, I believe so. I I think Sam Darnold has shown his ceiling. Mm-hmm. And the, the fact that he's only – wasn't he only like 19 when he got drafted? Yeah, or, he was really young. It was, yeah, it was wild. But even though yeah, he's only like 22, 23 – but it seems like he's already hit a ceiling. He'll give you a three to four game, I mean three to four game run of looking like a high level quarterback. Last year, we thought he was going to. He was a, he was in an MVP race for the first four weeks. We thought Sam Darnold was going to turn into Ryan Tannehill, where like just new new environment and he'd figure it out. But after that, he was it, it went miserable. straight downhill right after mm-hmm. his decision making became bad at best, terrible most likely. His accuracy was all over the place. Him and Robbie Anderson, who people thought they were going to mesh because they were former teammates, right? couldn't get on the same page. Him and the whole receiving core, honestly, just yeah. could never mesh. So even though Sam is going to get a chance, I think Baker Baker has proven when he's healthy and has good pieces around him, he can make it work. Yeah. Two years ago, they went 11-5 and five and beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh, winning a playoff game, and challenged the, the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. They gave him a scare. So, yeah, I think Baker wins the job, and boy, is he going to be hyped up for that first game. Yeah. and I, I It's going to be a lot of talking. And he'll most likely be playing against Jacoby Brissett, so no worries <laughs> there. But I think the interesting thing for me is, like, it's a good move for both the Panthers and Baker because it's another team where Baker doesn't have to be this number one pick. Like, Christian McCaffrey – leads that offense for the Panthers. And that's basically what Baker Mayfield's been known to have is a strong running game. So he'll continue that as long as Christian McCaffrey stays healthy. And and Chubba Hubbard is probably going to come into his own more. So Yeah. Yeah. And then you have still really solid receivers. DJ Moore, one of the most consistent receivers in the league. Uh, Not a big touchdown guy, but he's always good for a 1,000 yards. And then – they're, I would assume they're hoping to stretch the field more with Robbie Anderson because that's usually his strength is the deep threat. Baker Mayfield has a, a usually a little bit better deep ball than Sam Darnold, I would say. And, uh, yeah, the, we'll see what they do. But I don't know if it, like, moves the needle enough because the Panthers are in a rough place. Yeah. But if if Christian McCaffrey can stay healthy, maybe maybe they can make some noise. So it's, it's an interesting move. 
And basically, the Browns are going to be terrible, I think. Because everything that we've heard recently... If Deshaun doesn't play, it's very likely. And that's what it sounds like. I actually, no, no. I have to take Jacoby that Jacoby Prissett could get them a few wins. But their their defense is still stacked. Yeah. And their offensive line is still stacked, and they still have Chubb. And, right. They're, like, they're, they're still, with a average quarterback, which yeah. Baker has been at times, they're 9-10 wins. Yeah. If the quarterback plays better than average... They went eleven and five. Yeah. So all all they need is slightly above average quarterback play to contend for the playoffs. Slightly. Yeah. They have Amari Cooper. Donovan Peoples Jones is getting better. But other than that, like their receiving core is not that strong. Their tight end core is still pretty strong though. That's true. That's yeah, true. Even though I think Austin Hooper is gone, but yeah, they they still have um Njoku. Yep. And they have um and the the dude they drafted last year. I for, I forgot his name. Out of Florida Atlantic. If uh is it Harrison Bryant? Yes, I think that's one of the taller tight ends that they have. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean they got they got some stuff, but it mostly it's looking like Deshaun Watson's gonna get a full year suspension, at least right now. Luckily they got him signed up for what is it, five years? Two hundred and fifty million. <sighs> all guaranteed. He's got four more years to prove himself. Good luck. Yeah. All right, that's the only NFL news that we've had of recent um, but we are getting closer and closer to more stuff. Yeah. Like the season is next, the end of next month, basically. Yeah, training camp starts soon. The yeah. Hall of Fame game is, uh, I think, in the August. I can't remember what day it is. I think it's like 8th, 17th, 18th of August, something like that. Yeah. I just know that this is, I've seen the post all over the place. This is the last month before we get NFL football again. Yep. So very interesting. I'm excited. But the other thing that's going on right now is the NBA Summer League has started. If anybody's been watching this show for a while, you know I'm not a Summer League guy. But I got to change my tune a little bit. One, I really like Chet Holmgren, so I wanted to see how he would do. And then two, most of the Pistons' young pieces is on their Summer League roster. Now, I know I'm not going to see them play a ton. Cade's probably not going to play it done a ton. Sadiq's probably not going to play much. They're they're going to be courtside watching. Yeah. They'll be there yeah. for at least practices and all that, and they'll play with the younger guys. But I am excited to see, like, what Jaden Ivey can do. Um, of course, i got to see what the Bayheims do just to see if they can make a roster spot. See if Saban Lee can keep his spot, maybe. Fight for it. Um, but that will start tomorrow. The Pistons in the main... Uh, what do they call it? 2K23 Summer League or whatever it is. I just call it the Vegas Summer League. Yeah, yeah. it's it's the main Summer League. There's a couple before that played in uh, San Francisco and then Utah. Yeah. And so last night we got to see Chet Holmgren's first game. And he absolutely tore the floor up. I think he shot like 7 of... Nine or six of eight or something had like twenty three points in twenty three minutes. It was, I think the stat line was twenty three points, seven rebounds, four assists, and six blocks. And apparently, six blocks is a summer league record. Yeah. So he said he wants to break that now because he didn't think that that would that would be a record. Um, and he was doing everything, pull up threes, fade away, turn around. He looked like Dirk Nowitzki on one shot. A lot of people pointed out. Dribbling up the floor. He just looked really comfortable. He's a natural. Yeah. He's he's just a flat out natural. And that's part of the reason why I all the criticisms people have, I I just don't see them yeah. hurting his career. Like injury is the only thing I could see potentially hurting his career. Right. But the skill level and the toughness and the mentality, he has all of it. They had him he guarding Taco Fall. He looked like a child. Who isn't the biggest threat on Which, offense, obviously, but yeah. yeah. But Taco seven six. But Taco is seven six and just huge. Like, he started out the game against Kofi Coburn. Yeah, who's been d- bullying people for the right. past three years. Yeah. So Chet just looked small, and he's seven one, but against those guys. So I thought that was a really good thing to show off is that he can guard the bigger guys and do fine. Obviously, he's going to tear him up on the offensive side, but defensively, he could hold his own at least. Um. So I'm excited to keep watching. Chet as the summer league goes along. The other one to point out is Keegan Murray. A lot of people were down on Keegan Murray because he's, you know, he's one of the older players in the draft. 
kind of been around, had a poor tournament. So I even I was a little bit down from him. But he's immediately shown like he's comfortable. He's ready. And yeah. he had a twenty six point game, I believe, and a twenty four point game. Yeah. Already. We we knew he was the most ready to come in and produce for a team that's trying to win. Yeah. Which is why I figured the Kings would do it, even though it's still weird. Yeah, it's still weird. But yeah. Yeah, get, being down on Keegan Murray, I never fully understood it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he's, what, what is he, 22, I think, 21, yeah. 22. Yeah, he's he's older. He's not the super athlete. He doesn't flash the crazy ceiling. Mm-hmm. But he he's going to be a consistent at least like 18, 19 yeah. when he gets into like the groove of his career. Right. Yeah, we have to, you know, calm ourselves a little bit. This is the summer league. I'm not going to forget that. Yeah. Um, but now we get to watch the Pistons, like I said, tomorrow. And I think I just want to make sure that Jay Nivey looks comfortable in the summer league because that's going to be a big factor um, to see how he's going to start the season. Because I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Like, I think he's going to come off the bench at first, is my thought. Maybe I'm wrong. But that's just my thought that there there's a chance that he could come off think, the bench to start, the, starts season. At the, two to start the season. That's the question. If yeah. it's not Jaden Ivey, then who? Alec Burks. We'll get to that. But maybe. I think some people might be disappointed in that. But I, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't be crazy disappointed. But I mean, I obviously we want to see Right. We want to see it now because all of it is coming together so well. Yeah. But And that's why I'm yeah. saying like it, depending on how he does in this summer league, that might determine it, I guess, is more so what I'm thinking. Because I would love to see him starting right alongside Cade right from the get-go. I, I think yeah. they need to just get those reps in, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they work him in a little bit slower than people may want, I guess. Um, outside of that, I don't know. I just, I just kind of want to see who steps up for the Pistons in this summer league to see if we can strengthen our bench because I think that's kind of one of our weakest points right now is our depth. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to see who's going to make the roster and who's going to push for it. Cause I think our, our starting five besides like maybe the two guard is pretty solidified at this point. Um, also I guess Jalen Dern's a big one that I want to see how he, how he works into this, this team and how he plays. So. Yeah. I, 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 I don't think he'll have much of a problem. Because, I don't need. I don't either. Yeah, in these types of settings, is where like physical specimens like him just they just have to. Yeah, yeah. He's well, gonna catch lobs. He's gonna dunk on a few people in the post. Yeah, I think for yeah. me, it's more just chemistry wise. I want to see how yeah. they do. No, uh, it. I'm sure that it will be interesting. I think they're gonna give Jalen Duran some post touches. They're gonna give him a few opportunities to like show what he can do in the post. So that'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. I. I don't know if anybody thinks this way, but I think I want to see. I'm most interested in seeing what Isaiah Livers does in the summer league. That's a good one too. Because I feel like he should be the leading scorer. Yeah. He should. He should. He's going to take a lot of threes. He's been healthy for a while now, so his athleticism is well back. Yeah. I Mm -hmm. want to see what he does. And how he plays with those young guys. Mm-hmm. Also, Buddy better shoot at least like forty percent. He better. I was gonna say, like if, I said, he, they signed him, and so I assume they believe in his shooting right. ability. I expect him to hit when he's open. Yeah, Buddy and Braxton Key are both our two-way players off the jump. So I really hope that they can do something. Like I said, I'm a big fan of Buddy. Love to see him make the team or be on the team more consistently. I guess. So I would love for him to show out during summer league. I think he has the potential to be one of those sneaky players. Um, but yeah, the other one, of course, Killian Hayes. I think it's time he has See, to. See, I didn't even I forgot. He has to do something after the the good second half of the season he had. Yeah, I I expect him to come out aggressive. Yeah. Um, one other one that I would like to see. I'm. I think this is also like a a make it or break it because he was kind of raw last year and now he's had some somewhat experience is Balsa Koprovica. See, I totally forgot about that too. 
So I, I like they drafted Balsa. I liked him out of college. We knew he was kind of be like he's he's raw, but he's seven one and he's a big dude. And I would just I'm just always concerned about our depth in the front court. Like Isaiah Stewart's a little bit undersized. We just don't have like we did draft Jalen Duran, which I think is good, but I I just besides that Marvin Bagley is probably the second biggest. Right. So yeah. if we were able to get a big guy, come off the bench, do some things because Balsa in college did a decent offensive game. So I think it could it could help this team. So there's there's some guys on the the summer league team that they got some stuff to prove and see what they can do. So I'm I'm actually excited for once for it. Um. Other than that, obviously just watching the rookies and things like that, but I'm mostly going to just watch the Pistons to see what they do. All righty. Let's get to the actual free agency. Tons and tons and tons of stuff happened. There was a lot of guys that went back to their their original teams, but there was some big moves that also occurred. So Bradley Beal decided to decline his player option and then just re-signed with the Wizards for his max deal. Um, he's basically signed his life to purgatory. Um, kind of sad, but I, I don't know. Like Because he's making that much money, I'm not even going to say it's sad. Yeah, well, and it, It's clear that he's happy in the situation. Right. I, I like that he's committed to his organization, but at the same time, it's kind of weird. But So he stays with the Wizards. Um which I do think the Wizards have potential to do something, but they're never going to be a contender. They'll be 7-8 seed. Uh, Zach Levine also decided to stay with the Bulls, which I think was a good move. So the Bulls can run it back this year. They also signed Goran Dragic recently and Andre Drummond. So they should be in the playoff hunt, if not the top of the East, like we saw at the beginning of last season. Um but Evan Caruso and Dragic off the bench is really strong. Mm-hmm. Really strong. Yeah, and Audrey, they they should be a top five seed. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Brunson, no surprise, ended up going to the Knicks for, what was it, near? Four years, 106, I yeah, believe. Yeah, it was like near max, which is insane. Um, and apparently the Mavericks are trying to uh, say to the NBA that the Knicks already were negotiating with Brunson before free agency, so... We might see the Knicks lose some picks or something here or there. We'll have to wait and see. Um, other big signings, not too many. There was some. There was a tr- few trades. So Malik Monk went to the Kings. That was another kind of random one. Let me just scroll through real Tim quick. Tim and De'Aaron Fox reunited from Kentucky. Yeah. Um, the Nets got Nick Claxton back. Signed Patty Mills again. They did sign TJ Warren to a one-year deal, which I think yeah. will be uh, very important depending on what happens here, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, Cody Martin got paid from the Hornets because Miles Bridges decided his, to ruin his career. So I guess we'll we'll talk about that for a second. So the, it was the night before, right? Yep. The night before free agency opened, Miles Bridges – who was becoming almost the top free agent besides DeAndre Ayton. He was actually almost starting to leapfrog DeAndre Ayton for the most uh, exciting prospect, I guess. Got arrested for domestic violence. Beat his wife. There's uh, pictures of his wife that she posted on Instagram telling the whole story. Then later the next day, a video came out of his son talking to, I would assume, another family member about what happened. And it is just tragic. And... He got released on bail or whatever, but he is still um, being processed or whatever, and that will take forth. But his NBA career could be over. On the night before being able to be the biggest paid free agent this summer. Less than 24 hours away. Yeah. And I don't know. I I was kind of hoping he was going to be a Piston, and then the, the to me, the way that the Pistons did ended up with free agency felt like that's what they were going to actually go for. So it's just a, a crazy story all around. Um, I I don't know what to say. I just it's just sad. 
and not and not for Miles Bridges. It's not it's not sad for him because he. It's I, just it's very strange for Miles Bridges because you're coming off a career year, but in the midst of this career year, there are there are certain things that are like I, I wouldn't say the rapping was off. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't say the. <clears throat> There, there are a lot of guys that like want to be a rapper. Like Dame right. Lillard does it. There are a few other guys that like to rap. Yeah, I think so. I, I was talking with my brother about it because, like, we were talking about a lot of the Instagram posts were just. That's what I was gonna lead to. They were just immature. It was yeah. He, and like the argument that my brother brought up is like, he's in the NBA. Tons of guys are doing it. My point was not a lot of guys are sharing that personal side of their life or whatever, or what they're doing on the side. I felt like for miles that the, the limelight might've just gotten a little too bright for him and he was buying into it too much and started thinking he started maybe getting too comfortable. I, I don't know exactly. I can't speak for him of course, but yeah, it just, it seemed like he was getting more and more, present i guess in social media and stuff which is always a concern to me yeah that that post on instagram where he he had the the video of uh, drinking a cup of lean and Mm -hmm. smoking that was of the first red flag yeah and like i said like whatever you want to do in your personal life fine by me i don't care like we said like i'm sure he's hanging out with celebrities other athletes it's fine but i think it's when you start sharing it more often just seems a little off to me i guess and that's where i get it's almost like he felt untouchable yeah right like he can he can do anything yeah so we'll see what happens with it um i'm not a judge or anything so i can't really speak on it but i would think and unfortunately i almost hope that his nba career is over i think maybe he gets another chance he, at some point, but he might. He's young. the The example of somebody's career being cut, cut like cut short because of something like this, is Ray Rice, right? And I think the biggest reason why that happened was the video. Mm-hmm. It was on ESPN every day for weeks. <clears throat> yeah, and every time you watched it, it seemed crazier and worse. Mm-hmm. It, it seems like crazy to say it, but. Because of the way sports are and how many chances athletes are given today, you you almost have it has to go to the video extent, or it has to be something like Henry Ruggs, where it's right. like he has to go to prison mm-hmm. for something like this. And something like Henry Ruggs, there are other NFL players that have been in situations like that and still played. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a it's it's just a weird, yeah. strange thing. Yep. Yeah, that's why I said I don't I don't know if I really have the notion to really say but it's a it's a bad look that's for sure so one of the more exciting free agency agency uh acquisitions just not gonna happen um deandre ayton is still out there uh i assume they're still looking at sign and trade options because there is one big player that's still out there um my man kevin herter got traded to the kings for a first round pick, which I thought was kind of cool. Meant that uh he means a good amount to some other teams. Stinks that he's going to the Kings, but maybe he can show out a little bit. Um Malcolm Brogdon going to the Celtics. That's a big deal. Big trade. Uh Daniel Tice once again leaving the Celtics. <laughs> uh which is weird. But they got Brogdon for what was it Aaron Nesmith? Daniel Tice. Aaron Nesmith, Daniel Tice. They're sending Nick Stauskas. They're sending right. They're sending Juwan Morgan and I believe Marcus Fitz. Yeah, a bunch of G Leaguers, basically. Yeah. So, for not much, they get a very good point guard, one of the positions they need. Finally, after years, mm-hmm. a real point guard. Yep. I'm curious now if they're going to play small or if Marcus Smart will go back to a six-man role. I figure they're going to play small and just have um, Robin Smart, uh, Robert Williams at the five. Yeah, and then Brown and Tatum. Yeah, yeah, I could see that too. To me, that's the best five. Mm-hmm. 
if the Celtics can round out their depth a little bit, which I guess their depth isn't terrible right now, but it, it they struggled in in the finals. Celtics could be right back in it next year. Brogdon is if, if he can stay healthy again, his health is kind of his biggest concern. Uh, he can definitely take the Celtics back. He takes pressure off of everybody. Yeah. One of the and then let's just keep upping the ante here. Dejounte Murray traded to the Hawks. And I love the class that apparently the Spurs showed. DeJounte Murray came out and he said that the Spurs approached him, said they wanted to trade him because they didn't want to ruin his young career because they are focused on rebuilding. Yeah. And I thought, if that's the case, that sounds really good. And I, I like that from the Spurs. To, because at first I was like, why do you move on from DeJounte Murray? He's one of the best you know, young stars in the league right now. But he's going to go to Atlanta. Sounds like that's going to maybe keep Atlanta together. They were talking about trading John Collins and things. So you got Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, um, John Collins, DeAndre Hunter, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Clint Capella. They're going to be right back in the mix, hopefully. And we'll see what happens. I I really like the memes online of DeJounte Murray and Trey Young fighting for that when they have both have nine assists and they're <laughs> battling for their 10th and they just pass it back and forth. Yeah, I I honestly don't think Trey Young will have a hard like transition with playing off ball a lot. Yeah, I think it's I think be it's a, better for him. I was gonna say I think it's a good move for him. He is not he's not bad off the dribble necessarily because he's so quick, but at the same time he can free himself up more off the ball. We've yeah. seen Steph Curry do it a lot. Uh, Steph Curry will kind of bring up the ball, and then the way the Warriors' offense, you just kick it to a corner and let him run around some screens and get a lot more open looks. So. Yeah, Trey, a lot of his three pointers are taken with a defender. He takes deep threes a lot, so he yeah. gets space, but he has to take deep threes for that reason, right? To get space, and then now he can get open threes that mm-hmm. are just really good shots, right? Yeah, so I think it's a good it's a good deal uh, for the Hawks. They traded away some first rounders, I believe, first round picks. I don't really remember the exact details of the trade. But uh so that'll shake up the East a little bit, maybe put the Hawks back in there after they had a weird season last yeah, last year. And then one of the biggest trades that's happened so far, so far, Rudy Gobert to the Timberwolves. This, this trade is makes a lot of sense, but it's also weird on so many levels. I've I've thought about this a lot, and I'm not on the side of the trade at this moment. Mm-hmm. I feel like because you're the Minnesota Timberwolves, you decided we had this one successful season. Mm-hmm. We're building something well, so let's just completely rush the process and go all in on a defensive center that might not fit well with our, our big man and doesn't give you anything on offense mm-hmm. that alone. And then Anthony Edwards, he'll probably, he's going to be a superstar. Most high level players like him don't hit their real prime until like after 25, mm-hmm. he's 21. Are you, are you really expecting Anthony Edwards just to just become Jordan in like the next two years? Like, and then giving up Jared Vanderbilt, a, a very young, hardworking defensive player that can give it, it. It's just so much about it that it rubs me the wrong way after yeah. thinking after a lot of day. How do you feel about it? So I've actually flipped a little bit. I was more with you at the get-go. Um, now, they gave up a, a lot. Probably, I would still think probably way too much. They, yeah. they now, gave up them signing uh, Kyle Anderson and Bryn Forbes is pretty nice. Yeah, but yeah, they they gave away Walker Kessler, gave away four first round picks. One is no, Kev- they they got Walker Kessler. No, the, the, the yeah, they gave him to Utah. Yeah, they gave him to Utah. The I Timberwolves forgot. gave I forgot. up. Yes, yes, yes. I was thinking about the draft. Yeah. yeah. So for Rudy Gobert, the Timberwolves gave up uh, Malik Beasley, Patrick Beverly, Jared Vanderbilt. Um, Walker Kessler, which is basically a first-round pick, and then four other first-round picks. One heavily protected, so that's fine. Three unprotected first-round picks. So basically five first-round picks for Rudy Gobert, which is insane Yeah. on paper. But 
He's what, two, three-time defensive player of the year? They also re-signed Carl Anthony Towns to a max. So you pair Carl Anthony Towns, can move him to a more natural four position rather than him playing the five. Rudy Gobert in the center of the uh, court. I would assume now at this point Kyle Anderson will be their starting three, which is weird, but, you know, whatever. People like Kyle Anderson. Um, Anthony Edwards and D'Angelo Russell. They did also keep, uh, was it Jaden McDaniels or Jalen McDaniels? Well, I always get them too, too J- confused. Jaden McDaniels, I think he'd most likely be the starter. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, my one concern at first was their depth, but they did sign Bryn Forbes, so that'll help. So, yeah, they're all in. Is it going to work? I don't know. That's always the question Go, when a team goes all in, though. Going all in this fast. I, I just don't. Yeah. No, I yeah. get that. But, yeah, if you expect Anthony Edwards to take another step after having a really good season last year, maybe now is the time to go for it. You know? Um, they, they really must believe he's he's going to be an all-time great. Yeah. I mean, the way— They, they expect he's going to be, yeah. The way that he's played recently— I'm an Anthony Edwards fan. Shows he could get there. Um, and it might be sooner than re- than later. Uh, the other thing, the only other thing that I thought of, too, is, like, it, he wouldn't have been, but, like, Walker Kessler probably could have done the things Rudy Gobert does. But Walker Kessler can also stretch the floor a little bit. So that's why, like, I really like the draft pick of Walker Kessler. We talked about it even on our, our mock draft, but I don't know. Like it, it's tough because Rudy Gobert, you know, he's he's that veteran guy, he's been there now. Um, you know what he's gonna give you. Walker Kessler was more of a we don't know yet. Yeah, it that's why I said it's it's kind of difficult to read because it makes a lot of sense, but at the same time, they gave up a lot. Like a lot to do this. So I'm not sure. They traded their best role players. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's their kind of my biggest ones. concern is their, their depth is going to be very hurt for the most part. Like I, you give him Malik Beasley. He, he was good for having those games where he could go for 20 plus mm-hmm. when other guys are off. Who's that guy now off the bench? Yeah. I I don't know who it is. Bryn Forbes, Torian Prince, <laughs> Kyle Anderson. no, None of them sound like that. They're each good role players, but they're not walking buckets. Right. And Malik Beasley was a bucket. Mm-hmm. I don't. Maybe they'll find that guy off the bench, but yeah, I, I don't see it. Yeah. I mean, they did get Wendell Moore in the draft. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to look at their roster. They got Wendell Moore. They have Leandro Balmero, who hasn't played at all, really. Jaden McDaniels, Jalen Noel, who. Showed at times. He had, he had flashes, but yeah. Jake Lehman, kind of just an athlete. Nas Reed, Torian Prince. Nas Reed, he's, he'll step up to be one of their better role players. Oh, but. here we go. Greg Monroe. <laughs> saying, oh, here we go, and then saying his name, I, that that does not, no. Yeah. That shouldn't be a And thing. then the added guys that they signed, Bryn Forbes, Kyle Anderson, like I said. So, I guess their depth isn't terrible. Um, it's it, on on paper. It's kind of mediocre. They don't have a backup point guard though. That could be a problem. Balmero. <laughs> that's why I I feel like he has to be in this equation, Unless, because um, he's talented. He's young. He can play the point, but they just haven't played him much yet. Yeah, he has to be in the equation. Unless uh, McKinley Wright the fourth steps up, but he's small. I didn't even know he was on that team. I like McKinley Wright, but yeah. So, well, it's a wait and see kind of thing. Like it, it could work out. I, I, I think it could work out, but it's just it's a big risk. They have to make the Western Conference Finals at least in the next three years. Yeah, that's a, that's what I'm gonna say. Mm-hmm. They need to at least once. Yeah. All right. Before we get back to the big big news, I want to rerun through some of the smaller deals that happened, um, and then we'll talk about the main meat and potatoes of free agency. So Chicago Bulls, they got Zach Levine back on a five-year deal. Goran Dragic, like we said, Andre Drummond, Derek Jones came back. Cleveland Cavaliers, Darius Garland got his money, which I think was well-deserved, five-year extension. Yeah. Um, rookie Rubio 
coming back to the Cavs after leaving for a year he was on the Pacers on a three-year deal, which I think is great. Raul Nato, whatever. Robin Lopez, Chris thinks it's a good move. I think Robin Lopez is nothing anymore. I, I think I he's cooked? Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't think he does much for you. Listen, him and his brother have one foot out the door. Yeah. Uh, Dallas Mavericks, they signed <laughs> JaVale McGee to a three-year deal. Uh, Theo Pinson on a one-year deal. I actually think that JaVale McGee signing is kind of underrated. Yeah, I think it's fine. Having him and Christian Wood at the four and five mm-hmm. instead of Dwight Powell and who was at the four for the Mavericks last year? I don't know. Oh, was Dorian technically the four? Dorian I Finney? would think so. Uh, that's what I was going to say. I mean, he can slide more into a, like a natural three now, which, mm-hmm. yeah, having Luca Dinwiddie, Finney Smith, Christian Wood, JaVale, I really like that starting five. Yeah. I like it a lot. Uh, the Denver Nuggets signed Nikola Jokic to a five-year extension for the max. <sighs> Big paycheck. It could be up to $300 million. Yeah, it was insane. Uh, DeAndre Jordan, wow, I didn't realize he's still in the league. Yeah, I, I don't know why Denver did that. Uh, Bruce Brown agrees to a two-year deal for for Denver. I think that's a sneaky good move for them. What was it, two years, 13? Something like that. Yeah, it's really I don't good. have all the numbers on okay. this side. I just have the yeah, It's a really list. good signing for them. Um, the Pistons. Like I said, they traded for Alec Burks and Nerlens Noel. I think it was a fine deal. Alex Burks is a good player. Uh, then they got Marvin Bagley the third back on a three-year deal. Do you like the 37? It feels a bit high, but, I mean. In today's market, how high is it? It's not probably that bad, but it just feels like, like it. There's a universe where it could have been like three years, 50. Yeah. And it would have been like, oh, wait a minute now. Right. I, I just yeah. hope he keeps up what he was doing at the end of last season. I think that's my only concern, I guess, is he he's still on a small sample size. Yeah. Um, we also got Kevin Knox for a two-year deal worth $6 million. That's throw quite, away, throw away. Quite the downfall for yeah. Kevin Knox, but you know maybe he can do something. Golden State Warriors, like I said, Dante DiVincenzo to a two-year deal. I think it's great for them. Kevon Looney returns on three-year deal. They they paid him just for being on that team for so long. Well, he he got like after three be, years. after being there for years and going back and forth between starting and backing up. Yeah. When they needed him in the playoffs, he was huge. Because he's like, so a, I think he deserved. it. Because they signed him to a, like a three-year, thirty-something million dollar deal. I think. Something. I thought it was like twenty-six. I, Maybe I, it's not. Yeah, keep going. I'll, I'll try okay. to find the numbers. Houston Rockets. They got Jason Tate back on a three-year deal. Kevon and, Looney was three years, twenty-five point five. Pretty okay, good. Okay, so I guess it's not as bad as I yeah. thought. Uh, Jalen Smith returning to the Pacers. That's fine. Still haven't heard if Miles My- Turner is going to get traded. That was talks for a while, but. Watch out. He still might be involved in the uh, upcoming three to four team trade yeah. that we'll talk about. Um, Clippers, they got Nicholas Batum back for two years. Amir Coffey on three years. John Wall, two year deal. I love it. Real interesting. I love it. So curious to see what's going to happen there. I feel like he's going to just slide in so to perfection. We haven't seen this guy in 10 years. What do you think he's going <laughs> to do? <laughs> Listen. Doesn't it feel like it? I have been watching footage of him playing at the rec for the past two <laughs> years. Didn't he's been dunking. He's been going full speed. He is fine. Didn't John Wall? John Wall is fine. Didn't the song come out in like 2008? Around there. That, that was a while ago, man. <laughs> Jeez. So, But he's, I, I have no doubt. This might sound a bit crazy. I have no doubt that he's going to be mostly healthy for most of the season. Hmm. Of course, they're going to sit some of the – the Clippers have been sitting Kawhi and Paul George yeah. games for a lot of years. Right. They're probably going to sit John Wall for some games. I say he plays at least 60. Yeah. His return is going to be like a Derrick Rose return, to be honest. That I think he can do what Derrick Rose has done, like revitalizing his career. Uh, they also got Zubak back on an extension, which is fine. I think it's, it's good for them. The Lakers did their usual, like – swap out all their players, and then signed a bunch of one-year deals. They got Juan Toscano-Anderson from the Warriors, Troy Brown Jr., Thomas Bryant, Damian Jones, and Lonnie Walker. There's a big difference between these and the ones last year. Yeah. I I like Troy Brown Jr., Thomas Bryant, and Lonnie Walker. I think those are all fine deals. Still some pretty young players. Thomas Bryant has had some injury issues, but when healthy, he plays well. 
Uh, the Grizzlies got Tyus Jones back, and John Morant got paid. To Tyus uh, Jones got two years, thirty. Yeah, good for him. John Morant got five year extension. Uh, the Heat returned Caleb Martin on a three year contract. Victor Oladipo also re signed with them one for year. a one year deal, and they got Dwayne Dedman back on a two year deal. Milwaukee got Bobby Portis back on four years, which was kind of a surprise. It sounded like for a while Bobby Portis was going to leave. Sounds, people thought he was favoring Golden State at first. Yeah. One of the sneakiest pickups, I think, of this offseason, Joe Ingles on a one-year deal. People don't realize like how good of a player he is. And yeah. so for the Bucks to have him as a depth piece is good. Wesley Matthews, one-year deal, whatever. Javon Carter, two years, fine. Serge Ibaka, one year, whatever. All those guys are kind of, eh. uh, like I said, Minnesota, Kyle Anderson, Carl Anthony Towns, Bryn Forbes, Torian Prince. The Pelicans, they got their extension done with Zion. Five years, max. It was crazy. Like, I'm surprised they got it done, to be honest. And I think that's a good, a good, good sign for the Pelicans that they could make, they could make some noise. If, Listen, if they stay cohesive, things were very bleak mm-hmm. during that Stan Van Gundy year yeah. when Zion wasn't healthy and they didn't know what they were doing with their young guys. And then they lose Lonzo in the off season. Things look kind of bleak. They started off the season one and 12 and they just started figuring things out. Yep. They drafted perfectly. Herb Jones, Alvarado getting Valanchunas mm-hmm. was perfect. The CJ McCollum trade, it all worked out. Yep. And then their draft this year was fine. Dyson Daniels could be a, him and yeah, EJ Liddell. Yep. Both could be steals for their yeah. where they were picked. And it's looking like Willie Green is the upcoming really good coach. Yeah. So as long as those guys will all mesh next year with Zion, it should be contended for the playoffs. They can be fun. Yeah. Uh, New York Knicks, like we said, Brunson agreed to a four year deal. They did get Mitchell Robinson back for four years, which is nice. Um, and they signed Isaiah Hartenstein, which he's actually a pretty good role player. He's he's done some things. Two years. OKC, they got Lou Dort back on a five-year deal. Pretty big deal for him. Um, the Orlando Magic got Gary Harris on a two-year extension. Not a fan of that $26 million. Yeah, it's a little weird after him having some injury issues. And then they re-signed Mo Bamba to a two-year. Congratulations. He's back. Yep. 76ers. <laughs> Our boy Chris really likes their pickups. P.J. Tucker on a three-year deal and Daniel House on a two-year deal. Not a fan Big of Daniel whoop. House. P.J. Tucker helps teams win. So I think PJ, I think the P.J. Tucker thing is overrated at this point. Not going to really? lie. Yeah. Maybe because he's getting older. Maybe. But he's, he's helped on every team he's been on and yeah. every team he's on wins. Yeah. The Phoenix Suns got Devin Booker extended for four years. Uh, Damian Lee to a one-year deal. Bismack Biombo, uh, Josh Okogie on a one-year deal. All fine. Portland Trailblazers, there's Anthony Simon. Uh, Four years, 100 mil. Got extended for a big deal. Yusuf Nurkic. How do you new, feel about that Nurkic deal? What was it, 70 million on four years? Four years, 70. All these injuries. Yeah, I think the injuries are the biggest concern. If he stays healthy, he's worth it, I think. I think he's worth it if he stays healthy, but that's that's kind of the big if. Um, Drew Eubanks back on a one-year deal. Gary Payton the second got a three-year deal. That's a big signing. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to be kind of big for Golden State going into the next season. Yeah, and that's really big for Portland mm-hmm. getting him. Um, I think we said it earlier. The Kings got Malik Monk on a two-year deal. San Antonio Spurs. Wow, they got Gorgie Jang for a one-year deal. Forgot he was in the NBA still. <laughs> but like we said, Spurs they're rebuilding. Uh, the Raptors, they got Chris Buescher back on three years. They signed Otto Porter to a two-year deal, and Thad Young is on a new deal. I love that Thad is still back. in the league. Big Thad Young fan. Yep. The Jazz did nothing. And then the Wizards. Well, the like, Jazz got everything from the Timberwolves. Yeah, so, they yeah. got a lot of picks. They're they're basically retooling, maybe rebuilding. Well, Donovan they, Mitchell, they said they're retooling. Donovan Mitchell is not off the table is what I've heard, but just yet. Um. And if you know anything about uh, NBA Twitter as of recently, they did trade Royce O'Neal. Weird trade. I don't know what that was about. Yeah. Did you see that? When yes, the very Brian ominous, Windhorse. very ominous, laid back fingers in the air, Brian Windhorst. Yes, I love. I love. What? What's that about? Hmm? 
What is what is that? Very weird. <laughs> <laughs> Something going on. The uh, Wizards, like we said, extended Bradley Beal for a lot of money. Anthony Gill, new deal. DeLon Wright, two-year deal. Who cares? Woo, big deals. <laughs> All right, the biggest thing out of free agency, though, that we haven't talked about. We thought Kyrie Irving wanted out. He opted into his player option for the $38 million or whatever it is. Um, but that still but he, doesn't mean. But he still supposedly wants to be signed and trade. Yeah. A lot of people thought that when he opted in, that that was good news. We found out it was bad news in just a few hours when Kevin Durant requested a trade from the Brooklyn Nets. And NBA Twitter exploded. Yeah. So now it's been almost a week. No deals have really been stirred up. Um, mostly because the money is weird for a lot of these deals, especially for like Kyrie. Kyrie has tried is trying to like force his way to the Lakers. The only way that can happen is Kyrie for Russell Westbrook. And then you can't really do that straight up. You're gonna need picks because it would have to be a three team thing, most likely. Well, it doesn't even have to necessarily, but the Lakers will probably have to give up more than the Nets. Like the Nets could just give Kyrie. Lakers will have to give Westbrook plus compensation because, you know, maybe a couple years ago that straight on trade might have worked. Yeah, if I'm Brooklyn, Russell Westbrook you, has been trending downward. Listen, you got to give me Kendrick Nunn. You got to give me a few things mm-hmm. and picks. Yeah. Um, but then of course the big one just Kevin Durant. Where is he gonna go? And well, he uh. I don't know if he said this, but they said at the top of his list were the two number one seeds this past year. Yeah. Phoenix and Miami. Yeah. And the latest news won't make anybody happy if that if it happens. Yeah. He is open to returning to Golden State. Yeah. And the the other interesting thing, I think, is that the Suns and the Nets basically have reached an impasse because the Nets want Devin Booker. The Suns are not willing to give up Devin Booker. They would give up DeAndre Ayton, I'm sure. Um, But not sure how that would work. Doesn't feel like you'd have to give up DeAndre Ayton, Mikhail Bridges. It just makes it hard. Um, The other one being Miami, like we said, is that Bam Adebayo cannot be included on that trade because of the way the rookie contract things go. Because the Nets have Ben Simmons, they can't take on Bam Adebayo. So then you're looking at giving up somebody like Kyle Lowry, which I'm sure the Heat don't want to do. So the money doesn't match up great. That's where they're going to need a three or four team trade. Um, The ones that I've heard, too, that don't sleep on are like the Pelicans um, to watch out for. The Bulls technically could do it. I mean, realistically... Probably 29 teams in the NBA could get this deal done. And the hardest part is that Kevin Durant has, I mean, he has say in it, but he doesn't have like a no trade clause or anything. So the Nets can decide what they want from this trade. I don't know what that's going to mean or what's going to happen, but it's just, it's it's going to be interesting. That's for sure. Yeah, I I have no idea where he ends up. And I feel like wherever he goes, pe- basketball fans won't like it. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think there's any good scenario mm-hmm. at this point for him. After going out the way they did in that first round with Brooklyn, him and Kyrie falling apart in those last few games. He's just known as a guy that jumps ship when things get hard at this point. Yeah. And I understand at this at this time in your career, he's thirty four. You want to win as many titles as you can before you're done. He's won the scoring title. He's got the all NBAs. He's done that stuff. Mm-hmm. All he cares about is playing, hooping, and winning. Yeah, that's all he cares about at this, at this point. So, yeah, he's he doesn't mind going full villain if he has to, mm-hmm. and that's most likely what's going to happen. Whether it's Phoenix, Miami, Golden State would really just make everybody mad. The other one that a lot of people have been saying too recently, which. I think people would be very surprised with, but it's what I've heard is it's the most realistic, to be honest, as like almost a straight up trade they could do. The Toronto Raptors. That would be very interesting. KD to the North. 
So who would you be giving up? Like Ananobi? Yeah, it'd have to be some sort of package of Ananobi because he's a young player. Picks. Um, I can't remember the other player that they threw in, but I believe it's without trading like Van Vliet or Siakam. I assume Gary Trent would probably be in it too. Probably. Maybe Chris Busher. Does he just resign? Maybe. And then, of course, they have picks too. The Raptors have plenty of picks to get the deal done, which is the other most important part. Is what, like, like we said, we just saw Rudy Gobert basically get five first round picks. Kevin Durant now, the Nets are like, okay, well, if Rudy Gobert can get five first round picks, Kevin Durant can get as many as we need, right? Pretty much. So, yeah, there, there's a lot on the table. And it's probably not going to happen right away, of course, because teams are going to have to get tricky with things. And that's where a lot of people think that maybe in the next week or so, there could be more traction because when the summer league starts, a lot of the teams and owners and things are going to be in the same vicinity that they can actually talk out deals maybe. Um. So, yeah, it's... It's definitely, I would say it's like the biggest like superstar trade we've had since, I don't know. I would even say like since like the Celtics and all that with Kevin Garnett because, yeah, like when James Harden was traded and stuff, that was a superstar thing, but I don't know. That one felt more predictable, whereas Kevin Durant, this one's, I don't know. It's just a step above, it feels like. So where where would you like to see Kevin Durant, do you think? What would I'd be... like I'd like to see him in Phoenix. I'd really like to see him C P three Booker and K D. Hmm. But since you brought up Toronto, I think that would be very interesting. Mm-hmm. Adding him to that mix with Van Vliet and Siakam. Having those young guys, Scotty Barnes. I I would really I really enjoy seeing that. Yeah. Yeah, and that would be his first time in the East. I think that's actually an, he's he was in Brooklyn. What am I talking about? Yeah. I I think it would be a better fit for him in the East than what they put together in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'd like that Toronto. I always like when it's it's not one of the the top teams already. So. I like if it was the like Toronto or something like that, but I also I as much would be cool for the Pelicans to do it. I kind of like the young roster that the Pelicans have, um, and I'm not sure exactly what they would be. Yeah, I I don't I don't think because it'd be no you shouldn't trade Brandon Ingram. Yeah, because it'd be like Brandon Ingram, some picks. I mean, it'd be fun to watch CJ. Kevin Durant and Zion, but you got to give up more than just Brandon Ingram. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. they'd probably have to give up Valanciunas as well, which yeah. I think would be a big, big loss. A big loss. So, yeah, I kind of like the way that their team is is built already. So, not too sure. Not too sure. Going back real quick, I uh, just saw Leandro Balmero is included in the Utah deal. So, no point guard, no backup. Yeah, they got to figure that out. You can't trust Brent Forbes to be your backup point guard. No. Like I said, like they have like Jalen Noel for the Timberwolves, but I don't know. I, I Again, Kevin Durant is going to be everywhere. Like even – we've even talked about it. We Like we joked about it for a while. The Pistons could get involved. They also have the assets for it. But um, uh, You brought this up once. Let's never bring it up again, please. Why? I don't, I'm not getting anybody like excited, but I, I'm just I, I to me I don't I don't see the I don't see the point I don't people want championships I I've talked like I talked to my brother and stuff and he was like you wouldn't want that I was like what it's is, hard to say because how was throwing KD in this situation he couldn't do it in Brooklyn yeah how is he gonna do it here it's just I don't understand you there's so many mental gymnastics you have to do. To even consider it being possible yeah. for him to win in Detroit. My other thought is like, you get, you probably get two chances out of the four years 
because he's got four years left on his year. That's exactly what you you got a two year window. So you probably That's got it. two years out of those four that you have a chance. Yeah. Whereas if you keep the team as is, they're probably not ready just yet. Yeah. But if they figure it out, their chances or their their run of making the playoffs would be longer and it'd be extended. Are they beating Milwaukee? The Pistons? With Kevin Durant. With Kevin Durant. Are they beating Milwaukee? Are they beating Boston? Are they beating Philly? Are they beating any of the top three teams in the East? It's a really good question. I think it could be close because Kevin Durant after just, just getting that. swept with a much Kevin Durant more veteran laden, better roster. Just getting just they just got dismantled by Boston. Well, the Nets had a lot of issues. <laughs> to be fair, and the Pistons don't know how to win yet. Well, I don't know. There, there's. I'm just saying, sometimes a change of environment will do things. It would literally. It would have to be a miracle for that to happen. I don't think there's much logic in the whole KD thing. It's just we got KD. It's possible. That's all. That's all people have. That's yeah. It. And like I said, I at this point, I think I'd rather just watch the young team grow. It's kind of exciting. Troy Weaver is putting together something special. Why would we want to mess that up? I don't know. Also, I want to sustain winning. I want more than a two-year window. Yeah. We'll see where he goes. I mean, I, I've even heard, like, the Grizzlies, which would be crazy. They'd have to give up, like, Jaron Jackson for it. Yeah. But we will see. Hopefully, next week we'll be able to figure it out. But, yeah. Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, still on the market. DeAndre Ayton, still out there. So, all the big names are still out there. We'll have to wait and see what happens with them. But uh, this has been Views from the Sidelines. We will see you guys next time. So now that Baker is in Carolina, how do you feel about him not becoming a Lions quarterback like a lot of Lions fans wanted? Thank goodness. You know deep down you wanted to see it. No.